All right. Well, funny you should bring him up. Let's talk about the White House race a little more. Florida governor and 2024 presidential candidate Ron DeSantis picking up a major endorsement in Iowa. So, Peter Ducey is live from the White House with the latest on the 2024 election. So what has been the reception so far, Peter, of the endorsement? Well, it's interesting, and kind of like you guys were just talking about it, every single primary poll has Donald Trump with a huge lead over the rest of the field. But nobody has voted yet. Nobody has caucused yet. He is not the nominee at this point. And there are many high-profile Republicans trying to make sure that there is someone else who can rise to the top, be the party's standard bearer, the latest official, Iowa's governor, Kim Reynolds. Someone who most importantly can win. And that person is Ron DeSantis. Hey, I am so proud to stand here tonight and give him my full support and endorsement for President of the United States of America. This is the time of the cycle where we're going to start to figure out how much endorsements matter. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders is going to back her old boss, President Trump. And President Biden has been on the road a lot more with official events than campaign events. And he's got a new, very unlikely defender as whispers grow that maybe Biden wouldn't be the guy on the ballot next year. Uh, and this person is sticking up for Biden and lashing out at Gavin Newsom. Now there are two, there are two additional Democrats running for president, excuse me, running for president right now. One, one is a congressman from Minnesota. The other one is the governor of California. <laughs> They're both running for president, but only one had the guts to announce it. And as President Biden wakes up this morning and looks out the window of the residence, if he uh, points out at the street, he's going to see that the fence line is still defaced. The Park Service was out there yesterday with a pressure washer trying to get that fake blood that these anti-Israel protesters smeared all over the gates on Saturday night. Uh, there are still black tarps covering it. They apparently have been unsuccessful in getting that mess off the fence line so far. Three days later. Peter, back to you. I, just your opinion here. I thought if you touch the White House, there'd be guys in black outfits that would wrestle you to the ground. I'm stunned they were able to breach the fence, defile the perimeter. I mean, they knew this, this was 100,000 people in Washington. They said to everyone they're marching to the White House. Are you surprised, knowing the security like you know it, that they were able to do this? Yeah, like if I went outside right now to a different fence post with a can mm -hmm. of spray paint, and I wrote anything on there. I would expect to be in handcuffs in about five minutes. And there might even be a dog biting me, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, a Secret Service dog biting at me. And so at some point, so, and this is a photo that I took with my iPhone on the way in this morning, at, at some point a decision was made not to get these guys off the fence. Mm -hmm. uh, we do see Pennsylvania Avenue closed a lot during the day. Somebody drops a backpack, somebody is misbehaving, they will clear everybody off Pennsylvania Avenue. A decision was made somewhere in the chain of command not to uh, keep people back and to let this particular demonstration come all the way up to the gates. But I, if, if it's gonna take the National Park Service more than a day to get this paint or whatever the substance is down, that that's, that's a mess. That's Peter, a big mess. I'm sorry. It's an insult to the country. Peter, after the, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, the Russian embassy up on the Upper East Side here in New York was covered in all that red paint, too. Uh, and it took, I mean, I want to say a month for them to be able to remove it. And you can still see some of it on there because it's, it's like a stucco material um, or a cement. And I don't know what they're using, but it takes a long time. And they have to get the right company. You would think if you're the White House, you would have that cleaned up quickly. Well, it, it, and Peter, it wasn't just the paint. I saw them with, with the end of flax poking through the gate of the White House barrier. Yeah, and yesterday it looked like there were, uh, as you look down the fence line, there was a lot of stuff that was glued to the individual iron bars. And a lot of that looks like it's been removed. But when you have part of the White House that's drapped, uh, draped in a black tarp, it almost has the look of like a, a state funeral or like they're mourning something. Uh, but it's really just because they are cleaning up this big mess that was left behind by these anti-Israel protesters. You're embarrassed by it. Yeah. Peter, yeah, you said they that don't if want you went out with a can of yeah. spray paint, 
Peter, you said if you went out with a can of spray paint, you would be arrested, but also a dog might be biting you. You said the Secret Service dog. There's always a possibility it could be the Biden's dog. Hey, there's that <laughs> yep. Ducey kid. Commander I, was exiled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did Probably exile one of its uh, known commands. Oh, Ducey, uh -huh. go! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad y'all had a nice dinner All together. Right. Thank y'all for waking up for the show. I hope you got to see your grandbaby too, Steve. I did indeed. I got a, a bunch of, on my, when I'm back tomorrow, Ainsley, I'll show you the picture of Please where uh, I'm bouncing Bridget on my lap while Peter is ordering <laughs> off the menu. Oh, Peter, if you only, you, I know you do know, you have brought so much joy to your parents with that baby. She's darling. I I don't really do anything. Bridget does all the, all the hard stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you for Thanks, that report. Peter. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.